Well, thank you. So yes, we are going to talk about uh, an open source tool I wrote, which is called SQL Page, and that lets you build entire websites and web applications in SQL. So very quickly, just so that we all know what we are talking about, we are going in to go into much more details later, but uh, just so that we are all on the same SQL page. This is something that uh, takes a SQL file, a simple .SQL text file, and renders a web page out of it. So hence the name SQL page. You write a SQL file, you get a web page. Nothing more, nothing less. So, uh, maybe a quick word about me. So my name is Ophir. I'm a free software developer and have been for a long time. I have quite some projects up on GitHub. You are free to check me out on GitHub. I'm Lovazoa there. Uh, I've got engineering degrees from France and Russia. I'm French. Uh, I used to work as a data engineer at Quant, and my biggest project yet is not open source. It's my baby, which is coming next month. It may be even more work to maintain than SQL page itself. <laughs> yes, and my current job is uh, uh, I'm the CTO at a small uh, French startup called uh, Ixos. And what we do is we build software to manage energy flow in the renewable energy industry. So we do software that tracks the production and distribution of mainly green hydrogen and green electricity. So we have a lot of small projects, especially the green hydrogen industry is something that is nascent. And uh, we cannot afford to spend a whole year working on something if we don't even know if it's going to be used then. So we have to be able to, to try things quickly, to go in many different di directions, and uh, start a lot of projects very fast to, to try and see what is useful and what is not. And this is where the idea for SQL page comes from. So what are we going to talk about today? First, first question that I think needs answering is, why isn't this a stupid idea when I talk about writing an entire application in SQL, well, people think it's stupid. Who is going to want to write a, a web UI in SQL? It's just not built for that. So I think it's worth spending a few slides explaining why the idea is not as stupid as it sounds. So once we are clear with that, we'll explain what it does and how it works exactly. Then we'll see how to build a website in a day, so we'll make a little something live here. Uh, I have a small part about who uses it to, to give a few examples to make things more concrete, and uh, I've talked to, to users around the world who, who use it, and uh, I will present some of their, their projects. Then I have uh, a few examples of cool features to, to add at the end. And then, I'm not sure we are going to have time for it, but if we still have time at the end, we'll do some uh, live coding on stage to, to, expand, of the, the, to expand on the project uh, I will show. Okay, let's go. So, why? The first question I get when I say I want people to build websites in SQL is just, seriously, are you, do you seriously want me to build a, a, a new UI in SQL? That, that, that doesn't sound serious. And I've collected a few of the reactions of people online to, to, to the projects when I first presented it. So it's people who haven't tried it but have just heard about uh, what it does. So this is what Scottish Tapwater had to say on Reddit. Uh, just because we can doesn't mean we should. This is someone on Hacker News, and you know how people on Hacker News can be. It's just not how we, I choose to design a production app. And yes, of course, it's not. So no write a database in HTML. Know that you have written your, your, your UI in SQL. Write a database in HTML. Was it opposite day or something? And this person, whose name I cannot pronounce, had a nice meme to, 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 to add to the discussion. There is a point where we need to stop, and we have clearly passed it. But 
let's keep going and see what happens. And this is what we are going to, to do over the, the next hour. We'll keep going and see what happens. This is a, a, another quote, so I don't have a screenshot for this one, but this one is also a classic. So, your scientists were so preoccupied with whether they could, they didn't stop to think if they should. So, yes, of course, we, we, we can build websites in SQL, but should we? Okay, so to answer all of this sarcasm, I answer with a, another question. How many do you think programming job offers are online for every programmer looking for a job. So maybe 30% more, 50% more, 100% more. So let's count. So for every programmer looking for a job online, how many empty seats waiting for him are there? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There is a little bit less than one programmer for every 10 programming job offers. So this is a problem that has been going on for a long time. And the number of programmers has uh, grown drastically, but the number of open positions has just grown faster. The need for programmers just grows faster than the number of programmers. And there are a lot of places in the world that still don't have the database they, they need just because they have no one to build it. There's, there is a problem there that needs solving and that has been going on for a very long time. And what this means is, I think, three things. It means that programmers will need to, to write more applications, and I think that's some of you. Maybe by a show of hands, who here would call themselves a programmer? Okay, yeah, that's a vast majority of you. And yeah, that's a news for you. We are just, and I call myself a programmer too, we will just have to write more, to become more productive, to fill multiple of these empty seats waiting for us. It means the second thing, it's that Non-programmers, people who don't have uh, the education to, to be programmers, will need to, to write applications. And that's something that was just impossible just a few years ago. But with the rise of a new generation of tools, and SQL Page is just one of these tools, it is becoming more and more feasible. There are non-programmers building applications right now. And the third thing that it means is that some applications will just never see the light of the day. Some applications just won't be built and people will not get the, the, the value they could get from these applications. So this is the, out, the outcome we should strive to, to avoid. But the first two things are actually not bad things and we can do something to help both the programmers who will need to become more productive and the non-programmers who will need to build things anyway. And this is what SQL Page tries to do. So what do we need to fulfill, the need, to, to fulfill their needs? We need simplicity. We need something that's easy to use so that both the non-programmers can understand it and the existing programmers don't, have, uh, don't need to spend a lot of time building with it. We need something that's efficient, something that lets you build a lot quickly. We need something that's expressive so that all of your ideas can materialize in the form of applications. And we need something that's reusable so that when you build 10 applications, you don't repeat yourself 10 times, and you just have to express the one unique bit that is unique to your application. So how can we solve that? We have a lot of tools to, to, to put something online in, in 2024. There is a, a lot of options available. So these tools don't all do the same thing, but they share, they have in common that they allow you to put something online. The first category is uh, CMS and website builders, and they are great for non-programmers. They allow you to write something and put a website online quickly and without programming. 
These are things like WordPress or Shopify. And they are great, but they are not dynamic. There are backend frameworks, and they allow you to build very complicated things. And I guess a lot of you are using backend frameworks, but there are just a lot of work. It takes a lot of work to build an application in a backend framework. And even for tools like Django or Rails that really strive to make it easier, it's just not really feasible for non-programmers to use it. And even for programmers, setting up a project and getting started with it takes time. Third category is low-code app builders, and we are getting closer to what I'm getting to. But these are things like BuddyBase and AppSmith, just to, to name the open source ones. And they allow you to build graphically and to, to build quickly, but without some of the flexibility, you lose some of the flexibility of the backend, uh, uh, the backend frameworks. But they, they do allow you to, to build a thing. And then there is front-end frameworks, but they really have the same problems as uh, back-end frameworks. They, they are very powerful, but they take a lot of uh, work to learn. So if I put them on a map, this is what I would get to. On the top, we have things that are very customizable. It's the frameworks. Things that uh, allow you to build exactly what you need uh, according to the specifications you have. Whatever you have in your mind, you can probably build it with a back-end framework and a front-end framework. They are very customizable, but they are not really beginner-friendly, and they are much more work-intensive than the things that are at the bottom of the graph. And on the left, I put the things that build more static things, so things that I would call websites that uh, are not very interactive, and on the right I put things that are web applications that are very dynamic. And for beginner-friendly tools, we have the same dichotomy, so things like WordPress allow you to build beautiful websites and they are very beginner-friendly, but you are not able to build a, a, a custom thing, a thing that uh, really is custom customizable to your needs. And on the right, I have these low-code builders, and they are both beginner-friendly and dynamic, but still not very customizable. And they have a, a second problem, is that uh, they are just big machines, these low-code website builders. There are things that uh, you either use a hosted version, but then you, you cannot connect to your database. Your database is probably behind uh, one or even a few firewalls, and you probably cannot connect it to their online offering, or you self-host it, but then you need a huge cluster just to, to, to install these things. There are things that have multiple databases requirements. They require you to, to install Redis, install a second database, and uh, set up multiple services, and there are not things that are easy to, to deploy in your internal infrastructure. So either you put it, uh, you, you use a hosted offering, but then you probably cannot uh, access your database, maybe by a show of hand, who has a database that is publicly exposed on the internet? Yes, that's what I was expecting. No one, no, no one has a database that's publicly uh, accessible on the internet. So you cannot really connect to these offerings, and you have to do this all big setup to, 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 to set up this, uh, uh, these low-code builders. So what I wanted to build is something that would go in the middle of this graph. So something that would be more customizable than uh, a WordPress, for instance, but still more beginner-friendly, and something that would not build only static websites to, to, to present static pages, but maybe not build entire dynamic front-end uh, applications. Something that can, that, that can fulfill 90% of the, the, the use cases without 90% of the complexity. 
So it's something that connects to any database very easily. So it's just a database connection string when you start it and you are connected to your database and you can self-host it inside your infrastructure. It's accessible to non-programmers, and I have examples later in the, in the talk about what non-programmers have built with it. It can work with user-generated content, so it doesn't build just static websites. And because it's just SQL, you can have a select to, to, to select data from your database, but you can also have an insert, an update, and you can build something that is dynamic. And it's as fast as a website. It's all server-side rendered, as opposed to other low-code builders. So when you start a web page, when you load a web page built with SQL pages, it, it just loads instantly. So the motto is just three words. It's easy, beautiful, and fast. It's easy because you can build a website in a weekend, and I'm not joking. I have built multiple web, web, websites with SQL page over the weekend. It's beautiful, and I guess maybe by a show of hand again, who here would say they are good at CSS? No one again. Oh, maybe one person there. Congratulations. <laughs> but for all the other ones, of course you are bad at CSS. Everyone is bad at CSS, except him. <laughs> so, so, so yes, it's it just a very different set of skills. And I personally have met very few people who were good at styling things. So it was very important for me to build something that would look good out of the box, something that you wouldn't have to, to spend time customizing to have something that looks good. If you build something with just raw HTML, it just looks ugly. You cannot put it in front of a client. You would be ashamed of it. So SQL page builds things that you shouldn't be afraid to show. And it's fast. It's written in Rust. It's server-side rendered, so everything gets a 100 Lighthouse score. So it's good for SEO if you want to build something that will uh, uh, register on search engines. And it scales very well. And it scales both ways. It scales up because it's uh, very easily distributed. It's stateless, and you can uh, spawn hundreds of instances easily. And it scales down very easily because it's a single binary, a small binary even. So you can host it on a Raspberry Pi in your garden no, in your garage, maybe. And it will work well and serve hundreds of requests. So it's something that, uh, th th that scales from a Raspberry Pi to a cluster without you having to do anything, because it's entirely stateless, and all of the state is in your database that already exists. So to come back to the initial question, can we seriously build website in SQL? I would say yes. And since I showed you at the beginning the reaction of uh, a few people who had uh, been uh, exposed to the concept but uh, had not yet tried it, I tried to, to, to collect uh, feedback from people who have actually used it. So people are saying, in the end, it's a fantastic idea and an excellent execution. So it's actually that actually bring, it's something that actually brings value to people. People say it's very cool, it's well done. It's a cursed title, and yes, it is. But actually, it's very neat. And people say it's a great product. So this is just a few examples of what people who have actually tried it have to say. So I hope. I convinced you that building a website in SQL is not that stupid, and we can get into the meat of this talk. So what SQL page is and what it will do for you. Let's dive in. So it's an open source, low code, SQL only web application server. So it's under MIT. So it's a very permissive license. You are allowed to start selling it, and I won't mind. You can start your company with SQL page and do anything you want with it, and I won't have anything to say about it. It's written in Rust, which explains how fast and uh, easy it is to, to, to deploy. 
and it has absolutely no runtime dependency. So you get a binary, a small binary, and you can put it anywhere and just start it, and it doesn't even depend on, uh, on shared libraries. So you can put it anywhere you want, just start it, and you get all of the features out of the blue without having to configure anything else. So what is inside these small binaries that you get when you download SQL page? First is a web server. So it's a very basics of how it works. It gets an HTTP request in, and it gives HTML pages out. It's a web server, a very uh, classical one. You get a series of components, and they are all built in inside the binary, and it has a lot of built-in components that look good, as I said, for the 99% of you who don't know CSS. You get something that looks good out of the box, and it's all built in the binary. And it's database drivers, so the drivers that you will be the most interested in is probably Postgres, but uh, it can actually connect to MySQL, SQL Server, and to SQLite as well. So the SQLite backend is actually very interesting because you, you, you can put a tiny thing that is self-contained. The, SQL, the SQLite is a library that is uh, uh, compiled statically with the uh, with, uh, binary. So you get an, uh, uh, an entire database out of the blue and you can start building something small directly on your server without any dependency. But of course, you can connect to your Postgres database as well. So this is a quick schema of how it works. You have a browser. You make an HTTP query. So you just open a page in your browser. SQL page parses the HTTP query. Based on the query, it selects one of the SQL files you have written. And it starts executing it. And when it finds a prepared statement with uh, bound parameters, it binds parameters coming from the request to your SQL uh, query so that you can make dynamic things. And we'll see a little bit uh, uh, deeper how it works later. So it executes your queries on your database, and then your database starts returning rows. And it's all streaming, so as soon as the first row is returned, SQL page compiles it to HTML using the pre-built components and starts streaming it back to the server. So th this makes it extremely efficient, and contrarily to most backend frameworks, everything is streamed from the database to the browser. So you can build an, a, a huge web page without even using uh, as much memory in your servers than the entire web page requires, because everything is streamed from the database to the browser, and this makes it feel instantaneous. So how do you build these magical SQL queries? The core principle at the heart of SQL page is that to build one web page, you write one SQL file. So one simple file with a SQL extension. And let's see how it works. So this is a very small demo application that illustrates how you can uh, build an application. So it just has cards and beautiful uh, f f photographs. And to explain the concepts of a SQL page, we will see how this is built. So we'll split the application in components. So what we can see here is this page is built out of three components. And components are the very heart of SQL page. So you get one component to build the tabs at the top of the application one component to build the cards you can see inside, and one component to render text at the bottom. And that's all. So to render one component, we'll start with the tab component. You make two SQL queries. First, you make one SQL query that returns a very simple uh, uh, a single row that just selects 
tab as component, and SQL page knows it has to open the tab component, and then it has a few of what I call top-level properties that you specify when you open the component, and here uh, uh, we, we specify that uh, the, the tabs should be centered, so that they appear in the center of the, of the, the screen. So what we have is one SQL query to open the component, and then a second query to fill in the component with data. So we, we make another query, and SQL page doesn't really care how you return the data. You can make the query you want. SQL page is pretty much agnostic about how you make your queries. What's important is what you return fr from the database. So in here, we just return data, and each row inside the tab component will materialize as a new tab. And each component has its own uh, definition of what goes inside uh, the, the component. So for the tab component, each row returned by the database is a new tab. So here we, we see we have four tabs, and we have four rows returned by the database. And these rows can be returned from the database because they are stored in a table in the database, but they can also be very simple static select queries that just return static data that is not stored inside the database. SQL page doesn't care. So we will build our entire application like that. So then we have the card component, and the card component works pretty much the same. So first you open the component, so you just select card as component, and SQL page knows it has to close the tab component. We are not going to add any more tabs to our, to our tab component. Start a new line inside the application and start adding cards to it and then we fill the component with data, and it works exactly the same, except when we were inside the tab component, each row would materialize as a new tab, and then in the card component, every row will materialize as a card. And we just uh, select what we put in, inside the, the, the component, and each row will create a new tab inside the, the tab component. And you just select which part of the template to, to fill by uh, giving the right name to the columns in your, in your query. So here I select something as title, and this, this will set the title of my, of my card. I, say, I select something as link, and this will make my card click, uh, clickable, and I can uh, open a link when I click the, 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 the tab. I have the description, the color, the top Im image, and I have a lot of row-level properties like that that allow me to customize how things will look inside of it. And then we have the text components. So this one is very simple. And uh, it has an interesting top-level property. So here we don't have any row-level property. We just select the component and directly, as a top-level property, specify what is going to go inside it. And SQL page has an embedded markdown renderer. So you can select something uh, as contents MD, and it will render the results as markdown. So it's very useful to uh, build a a quick blogging system or even anything static that goes into your website, you can specify as Markdown. Okay, I hope we are clear with uh, what SQL page does and how it works, and I hope you are ready to build a tiny something together. So we'll build a tiny tweeter. I wrote it Twitter, so Twitter cannot sue me. So, what does the database structure for Twitter look like? And I hacked into Elon Musk's computer, and <laughs> I found out it's actually very simple. <laughs> so, it's a single table called tweets, and you have an ID and a tweet, and that's all. And you may think it's, a to it, it's just a little toy, but actually it's very serious, because you see it has a big serial ID, so I'm actually ready for my next million users. Okay, let's go. Let's start building Twitter. So the first thing we do is we open a special component called the, called the shell component that will allow us to personalize the shell of our application. 
This one is uh, optional, but it will allow you to, to personalize everything that goes around the heart of your application. So things like the title bar. So I select shell as component, and I select a top level property called title and tiny Twitter, because I'm going to call it tiny Twitter. And it will just render the, uh, the top bar with the title. And here it is. I have a, a very simple web page where I already have a shell for my upcoming data. So what do we need then to build Twitter? What do you see when you open Twitter? So we have something to post a tweet. So we open the form component. We just select form as component, and it opens a form. So at the beginning, the form is empty. So we get an empty form with a submit query button, and we are ready to put things inside of our form. But I think the button on Twitter doesn't say submit query, it says tweet. So we add a simple top level property to the, the component, and it's called validate for the validate button. We select tweet as validate, and it changes the validation button of the form. So these are for the top level uh, properties of the form components. And then every row returned by the database is going to be a new field inside the form. So I make a new select query, and I just ask uh, him to uh, tell me your story. And it, since it's a new row returned by the database, it's going to be a new field inside my form. So here we go. I change the type to text area, and I get a text area. I add a new field, and I'm, uh, remember, I just hacked Elon Musk, so I'm, I'm just ready to be a big billionaire, so I have written, written uh, very complicated terms and conditions with uh, very little fine print, and I want my users to, to validate the term and condition every time they submit a tweet. So I add a new field to my form, and it just appears, and it's just one new query. And I think here it's worth to say that for queries like that, so you see it's very simple select queries that don't have a from. So SQL page parses all of your queries. And when it sees this very simple query, it doesn't even send them to the database. So you don't have a lot of back and forth between SQL page and the database. When, it's, when you have these completely static queries, SQL page just knows how to interpret them, and it renders the result directly without even going to the database. But when you add more complex queries, then it will need to send them to the, to the database to get a result. So maybe you see where I'm coming, where I'm going, but I will need to insert the, the, the result of what the user typed in the form to my database. So I give a name to my text area field. So I call it new tweet, and this is what is going to allow me to reference it in future queries. And then I can just do an insert, because this is how you, you insert data into a database. So I just make a simple insert, insert statement, and I can select, and you see the, the column here that is uh, uh, untypical for Postgres queries, but SQL page is going to parse this and uh, send the query to the database as, as a traditional Postgres query, but it will uh, use a prepared statement, and it will know that it needs to bind new tweets to whatever the user has written in the, new, the, the form field that we called new tweet. So we have this insert statement, and it works, and it inserts something in the database, but we don't want to insert something in the database every time the page loads. So when the page loads, in initially, we don't have uh, anything in the new tweet variable, so we don't want to insert anything. So we just 
add a where condition and new tweet is going to be null when uh, the user hasn't submitted the form with a new tweet and we will just not insert anything in the database when there is no new tweet. Okay, and then rendering the tweets themselves is actually the easiest. You just select card as component and it builds these nice li little cards that we have seen earlier. So it's just a very simple static select that won't even go to the database. Select card as component, it opens the card component. And then we just select tweet as description. We need this as description so that SQL page knows where in the template we need to, to insert the tweet from tweets and we render all of the tweets. So I said I was ready for my next million users, but I hope not too many of them uh, post tweets because I don't have even a limit on this query. So I'm just going to render all of the tweets in my database on the front page. But it's okay, it's just tiny Twitter. And here we go. We've got a very simple application that we built in 20 lines of pure SQL. It's pure traditional SQL, and we have an application with uh, uh, the ability to insert new data in, your, in our database and then render it. And if we just needed to render some data coming from a query, we would, uh, and, and not to insert new data, we wouldn't need anything more than these three lines at the bottom. So you can build uh, 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 an application that's useful for, for you with just these tiny three lines of SQL and you already have value that comes from your database that is rendered as an interesting web page. Okay, so I hope everyone gets what it is and what it does now. So I've prepared a few examples of what people have built with SQL page. So I've interviewed a few users. Of course, it's entirely uh, free and uh, open source, so people can build things with it without telling me. But I have talked to a few users and I took three examples of what people have built in order to show you. So I have three examples, two from France, which is my home country, and one from South Africa, which I think is the most touching one. So the first is David in the south of France, in the little town of uh, Monde. He works at a high school, so he's a coordinator and he works with uh, pupils with special needs. So they have uh, disabled pupils in the school district and they had a big Excel file that they used to track who, which helper was helping which student and uh, how much time they were spending with each student. And David was an open source enthusiast, but he was not a programmer. He was a, a, a high school coordinator. So he had absolutely no past experience with SQL. And this is what he built. So he built an entire web application that fulfills all of the needs that were fulfilled by his Excel file and much more. And that just looks good. So this is his application. And this is what he built in, um, in one month without any prior SQL experience. So all of you with all your big SQL experience, I think you can build that in a day actually. This is what he built. Okay, my next experience is in the, my next example is in the Parisian region. So it's archeologist. So please meet Florent. Uh, he works at the National Institute for Preventive Archeological Research. And what they have, wh what they do is when there is a construction site starting, they send these archeologists on site to check that there are no interesting archeological artifacts that that are at risk of being destroyed by the construction. So they go and when they find something, they have to reference it. 
So very often they find thousands of artifacts and they need to reference all of them in a database. So they have, they have actually two databases, one big uh, post-GIS database where they uh, uh, reference the core, the exact coordinates of everything they find, and a small uh, SQLite database with a special light extension that they use uh, to collect data on fields. And they are just the best at naming things. So there are, their group is called the Ramen Collective. And the database they work, on, they work on, they called it the Badass Database, as Base Archaeologique de Données Attributaires and Spatiales. So this is the Badass Database. So they, they already knew SQL because they were working with this big Badass Database. But they didn't know programming, and they didn't know how to build a UI for their database. So what they did is they took SQL page, and they built an interface for Badass, which they called Badmobile. <laughs> so this is Badmobile, of course, because it's uh, the mobile version of Badass. And this is what they use when they go on the field now. They, so each one of the, of the lines you see on this screenshot is a different feature of Badmobile. And they use it to add data to their, to their database. So it has a lot of features, but basically it's a very simple uh, CRUD web application that, that allows you to create, read, uh, update, and delete data from a lot of different tables in their database and then they can visualize that data on a map. And it fulfills their needs, and they didn't have to write a single line of code except the SQL, but most of the SQL they already had because they had their queries that they use already with their database. Okay, and my last story is from South Africa, so it's a little bit further, but I think it's the most touching one because it actually, uh, change the life of someone. So this is from a transport company. I'm not going to name the company, but it's a transport company that's based in South Africa, but works in all of Southern Africa. So they work in Namibia, Mozambique, Botswana, and South Africa. So it's a company that's uh, really not an IT company. They have their core business, and they have a database to store their data, but they are just not an IT company. And they had recruited William, and William worked at their call center. He was just a call center operator answering calls, and you know, at every non-technical place, there is this one person who just uh, is good with computers. And at this call center, it was William. William was the, the guy people come to when they have problems with their computers, so they, asked him if he wanted a promotion to work as IT support. And William accepted, so he was good with computers, but he was definitely not a programmer and didn't have experience with any of the traditional web tech. But his boss asked him if he knew about this tool called the SQL page, and since William knew a bit of SQL, he thought he could build an application out of it. And so his first programming experience after working as a, at the call center was building an application in SQL. And what he told me is what touched me the most. He told me the application he's working now is becoming kind of a big thing for the company. And he, it has allowed him to go from uh, working at the call center to building an application that is going to be uh, uh, critical to his company. And he told me he wouldn't use anything but SQL to write a front end. And this, this is kind of ironic. So he won't, build and he won't build a front end in anything but SQL. And he told me it's so easy to build websites with it that he's going to start his uh, side projects now in order to earn some money on the side. Now that he, he, he has just found a new sup superpower, he can now build applications. So I don't have a lot of screenshots because it's from 
his, uh, his personal uh, uh, company application, but this is what he built, and you see it doesn't look exactly like the rest because he has used all of the possibilities of SQL page and he has built custom components on top of SQL page. Okay, so very quickly, I'm told we have just five minutes left. I have a few examples of cool features that we haven't evoked before. So, APIs. You can build an API in 10 lines of SQL in just a few, se in just a few seconds. You just use the JSON component, then run SQL page. You can run the, the, the built-in uh, uh, Docker container and you get a fully working API on top of your database. Nothing more. It takes 40 seconds to build an API for your database. Then passwords. So this is kind of an advanced feature, but uh, SQL page supports uh, password hashing and uh, hash verification. So you can have a, a tiny user table and you can check passwords, both with uh, uh, just a basic HTTP OS and a full, uh, a, a full identification form. And it's just a few lines of SQL. Okay, I think we don't have much time left, but uh, I would ask you if you like this presentation to maybe leave it a store on GitHub and visit doc the documentation on sql.ofir.dev. So any question? Maybe we have time for just one question? Thank you for your talk, very, very interesting. I wonder if the components you show with maps and visualization of data are components provided by SQL page? Natively? Yes, yes, they are all provided by SQL page. And I'm not sure I can show it now, but if you open the, the SQL page website, you can find a list of all the built-in components that come pre-built within the, within the binary. So, for instance, if you want to build a map, you just select the map component, and here is the documentation for the map component. And you can build very simple up to very customized maps with SQL page. And it supports GeoJSON, so you can represent any uh, GeoJSON data structure on the map easily. I have another one. Okay, thank you. And what about the documentation? I mean, application side documentation. Can we use, I don't know, comments on table, comments on code? Or I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't get it. Uh, uh, for example, you created a table tweet, and can we add a comment on table tweet to explain what the table and purpose is and does the skill page? That yes, you can add a comment, but SQL page is pretty much agnostic about it. So you just have your own database. So SQL page supports migration. So you can create a table from a migration that uh, SQL page is going to interpret to, 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 to create the, the, the table. And you can use just all of the, the normal SQL features. So you can add a comment on the table, but SQL page is not going to interpret this comment. You demonstrated the bad mobile application. Is that something that actually runs on mobile phones? And how do you put this Rust environment onto a mobile phone? Okay, it's a mobile web application. So what they do is, a, it was actually a very important topic for them, is a, they have a Raspberry Pi which runs a tiny SQL page server and uh, opens a Wi-Fi when they go on site because they don't have access to the internet on site. So what they built is they have a, a small Raspberry Pi which holds which uh, hosts SQL page, and they just open their smartphones and connect to the Wi-Fi created by this Raspberry Pi and open the application just like any web application on their phone. Okay, any other question? Well, I think we are right on time. It's 10.20.
Thank you very much for attending. <laughs>